Don in London, hello, it's March the 4th, 2013. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addicted substance, alcohol, and my behaviour became equally addictive around being perfect for different people in different places doing different things. Always trying to be the person I thought you wanted to me wanted me to be. <coughs> and these days just learning life one day at a time. How to live sober, how to be the person I can be, have some principles around open, honest and willing to change and keep on learning. And uh, <coughs> I've been doing these videos for quite a while. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, what made it possible to be sober? Well, some professional help at the beginning uh, to, to dry me out and stop me drinking incessantly, 24-7, followed by some advice and support, which was, you need support to keep this going. And the only place we know, these are the professionals speaking, that can provide day-to-day -day support is the Fellowship of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, the very last place I wanted to be on this planet at any time in the past because it meant giving up my best friend which was alcohol and then it became uh, a dependency and then a killer malady so these days I am an avid fan of how the Fellowship of AA helps me on a daily basis keep sober I never speak for anybody else in the Fellowship of AA and if you're in the Fellowship you know this I cannot speak for you and I don't want to speak for you because you will speak and share your experience, strength and hope where it is appropriate and you feel right doing so. So I was asked to do this and answered doing this just to share how it works for me and then maybe to realise that one voice is not enough in recovery. I am not a guru, I am not somebody who knows better than anybody else. Each person finds their own way in sobriety, making free choices, as free as they can be based on reality today. So what is AA? It's a fellowship. It's not a conventional organisation with a hierarchy. We are indeed in fellowship. We are trusted servants working in unity, service and recovery. But here on doing these videos it's just me sharing my outlook and my views and not represent not representing the fellowship and not re representing anybody else but I share what AA is and this is the AA preamble shared at every meeting Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcohol alcoholism and that's it, we share our experience, strength and hope so that we can help solve the common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The, there is only one requirement for membership, or the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied. AA itself is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution, does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other others to recover sorry, to help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. I'm stumbling over my words this morning, I'm a bit, I'm a bit tired. Anyway, there are 12 steps to help a person become open, honest and willing to change and find integrity, fair dealing and truth as good, good ways forward rather than the opposite, closed down, dishonest and unable to face reality. So where am I today? As I say, I'm a bit tired. Um, my routines were different yesterday. I got to a meeting in a, a different part of London and went with my best friend, which was great. And we had a good laugh beforehand, a good laugh at the meeting, and also took in all the serious elements of what it is to be in sobriety. And had a good laugh on the way home. And then I was dropped off, and uh, I thought I'd just have something simple to eat and I'd get it an early night. Unfortunately, as I'll explain, I had a soft drink which sort of upended me a bit. 
it was a soft drink it wasn't alcohol but uh, other things can impact on my body these days so my thoughts and feelings or my feelings and my thoughts this morning and taking account of March being about the third step in the uh, 12 step program which is about letting go and finding your higher power this thing of a higher power I have a higher power all, all around me all day long it's the wisdom of other people it's the truth, love and wisdom shared that I hear and when I cannot sort out the answer for myself I ask for help so I am merely one of many in recovery and I need as much help as the next person on a daily basis so my my words this morning letting go of self-sufficiency in order to gain independence so from being a self-sufficient trying to have trying to work it out all myself type of person I needed to let go because I didn't know how to stop drinking and I needed help and then I got my independence back so let go and learn let go and ask and find freedom of choice today fellowship all about emotional and spiritual well-being learning what our feelings are and experiencing them in the moment of now in time feelings fit life as it is today feelings can be good bad or ugly depending on what is happening to us and our responses in the moment of now so fellowship has taught me that uh, the emotional and spiritual experience is always now I'm developing wisdom all the time and I'm learning the wisdom of other people all the time so I'm not necessarily relying self sufficiently I don't need to in fact it's probably better I don't because if I try and work it out all on my own and present you with the answer you'll probably reject it because you haven't been included and not part of it it may seem obvious that our mood impacts on our thinking and then our thinking impacts on our actions so we feel we think and we take action and yet somehow the very last thing we take account of are the feelings we have inside which determine our thinking and what we do next we're not really aware of our feelings how often do we actually say to ourselves how am I feeling about this and often the answer is I don't know because I haven't explored feelings for a while or well, more so these days if we are happy our thinking is happy and the actions which follow are likely to be happy actions and based on love when our feelings are turned inside out and rather than love there is hate we have hateful thoughts and actions and the actions can be hateful to ourselves and others it may seem obvious we can when we stand back that feelings are very real the problem is we often don't stop to consider our feelings and we often interpret other people's feelings to be the same as ours and when they are not we get mad and try to get even so there are many assumptions we make just because I have an open honest willing outlook and I want to share what's going on it doesn't mean that other people have an open honest outlook and want to share what's going on for them indeed with anonymity being sacrosanct within fellowship sometimes people just do not share what's going on for them because they just prefer it not in the public gaze or even in the meetings gaze but secrets do undermine us because people just don't know wh where we're coming from so if we have a hidden agenda even to ourselves if we haven't worked out what our, ag our agenda is we can find ourselves in hot water and everybody else feels the boiling mad as well letting go and forgiving everyone everything is necessary for me as well so letting go and forgiving everyone everything realizing the actions that are taken in the moment of now are always the best they can be because of where we the way we are and it means that there is much room for forgiveness for, of ourselves and those around us who are impacted and may respond with equal strength and hold their ground may have more strength and we lose ground or may be weaker and we trample all over them without regard and often without realizing the harm done to ourselves and to them in the process so if we are forceful in our argument and somebody feels railroaded by it they may say yes to your face but no say, in the, say no in their heart and <coughs> if we find ourselves in a group which says oh we all ought to do this shouldn't we 
it takes a, a bit of strength to say well actually I don't feel like doing it that way and the answer is no that's very hard and I, one of the things I said last night uh, it was something I sort of roughly interpret from what Gandhi said about saying no Gandhi said an emphatic no is better than a half-hearted yes and if you say that to somebody who is trying to get you to do something if you say Gandhi said an emphatic no is better than a half-hearted yes what do you mean by that well emphatically no I don't want to do what you want to do and if they persist you can say an emphatic no is better than a half-hearted yes I don't feel like doing it which may confound them but equally if we're asking somebody to join in with us and they say to us an emphatic no is better than a half-hearted yes you might not only be cheesed off you might try and push it some more and sometimes we need accept a no somebody doesn't feel like doing something and if they persist tell them to fuck off now it's easy to say that hard to do but sometimes we have to say fuck off in the most whatever way works to get the message across no I'm not joining in with your new uh, confounded idea or your new idea about the relationship we have I have my feelings too and my feelings say no and you're allowed those feelings all feelings are real in the moment of now best we listen and understand them because our thinking oh I want to fit in if I do this they may do that and that's a negotiation but the more it's secretive the less chance of understanding let go and ask for help let go and include people let go love unconditionally and accept a no when you get one otherwise <coughs> excuse me life will get very complicated a meeting last night and showing me of the acceptance passage in the big book I had the privilege of reading it I tried to I said to the, the secretary I don't know if I can read it I've got the wrong glasses on he said oh don't worry about that and fortunately he had uh, oh I've just got them here he had this book <coughs> for, me, for me to read from which has got big letters so even though I had the wrong specs on I could read it and it was the acceptance pa passage and it's a, if you've got the up to date one it's page 416 through to 418 or 447 through to 449 in the 4th edition so I was able to read it <coughs> and I read it slowly because it means something to me and that's the way to do it is to share it slowly so other people can hear it as well and acceptance is accepting where you are your outlook your attitudes and what makes you tick as much as me accepting what who I am how I work and what makes me tick and sometimes we don't tick tock together that's just the way it is or we, we're in synchronicity and it is all it's all it, it always makes me understand more about myself when I read the acceptance passage and more about my impact on other people firstly that alcohol led to alcoholism in my, in my case that it is a disease and a killer malady although some, some use it as an excuse I've got a killer disease and a killer malady which is why I'm such an awful person well you're not an awful person you may be behaving badly you can turn it around if you wish to and you have the help and support to do it and if I tried to drink again I would be powerless over the outcomes and life would be unmanageable so I prefer not to drink today that is my reality today I need not drink and I prefer not to drink and this is free choice and this free choice can be made on a daily basis so I do my step one two and three in the morning step one I am powerless over alcohol and if I were to drink life would be unmanageable step two which is about being restored to sanity came to b believe that a power greater than me could restore me to sanity and what I found was the wisdom is all around me if only I can ask and step three finding a higher power your higher power not mine is for me my higher power is truth love and wisdom learned from others and if I'm still uncertain ask for help because that higher power is always there and that's my reality and this free choice can be made on a daily basis and with the help of the 12 steps I keep my freedom and my ability to experience my feelings in the moment of now the emotional and spiritual life 
I never really understood, although I thought about it a lot, and with my head, my thinking head, I thought I understood it. But I was, if I'm examining how I'm living my life, I'm studying it rather than living it. So living and experiencing feelings in the moment of now, which fit with what's going on today. Life is full of good, bad and ugly moments, and if I know my feelings, I will know how my thinking is influenced and the best actions forward. And the beauty of letting go with step three is the ability to realise I do not always have the answer, and I can ask for help from anyone, anywhere, at any time. The higher power is always present in the ever-present, present moment of now. So the higher power is around prayer and meditation, clarity, can do, can't do, wisdom to know the difference. And sometimes I have to sit and wait a bit and be patient for others to be available to ask questions. Last night in, comp in the company of people I know, in the company of new people with a lot of sobriety, always open to new experience, this is me, new experience, strength and hope. And having shared about how much acceptance of life on life's terms has helped me, someone asked me how long had I been sober. Answering truthfully on this occasion, I do on all occasions, most of the time, I just say what, what it is. And then I get a bit cautious and say, well, I always go with sober, sober today. But then that's not the truth. Well, it is the truth, but it's not what they're looking for. They want to know how long I've been continuously sober for. Anyway, um, answering truthfully on this occasion, just for the sake of it, I asked them how long they had been sober, and they replied with a number twice my sobriety. I never know quite when a person asks how long another person has been sober, why the question has been asked in the first place. In this case, I reckon I was checked out for reasons of challenge about some of the things I said. And of course, depending on the mindset of the person asking about the length of my sobriety, they could be looking for many reasons, either to discount wonder where this person is coming from, namely me, and actually I don't know if there is any good reason for asking another person how long we have been sober. Today is all we have. Indeed in fellowship all we have is today, and if we can be sober just for today, we have a good chance in our emotional and spiritual life, because it is one day long. When it comes to matters of the heart, or matters of wealth or finance, love is a constant, hopefully, and unconditional as we learn about love and matters of wealth and finance are constantly fluctuating depending, depending on our income and expenditure one day at a time. How do we measure other people? Which is the question prompted by how long have you been sober before? How do we measure other people? The simplest answer is best not try and measure other people and as acceptance suggests better to understand one's own situation and not compare or despair, or despair and most emphatically try not to judge others as they will judge back usually more harshly and without a word being spoken so we get judged one way or another whether we like it or not because that's what humans do we judge, oh I like that person but we don't know why well it comes down to unconditional love hopefully in the end because that's the only place to be Love is unconditional, or otherwise it's a power game, or a, a control matter, or a manipulation. Just because we desire a person, doesn't mean we actually love the person. Love and desire can be complementary, but if you're not able to love and desire the other person, it becomes a bit of a hassle, or it can be. So, one of the most important parts of acceptance is to realise that, if anything, we are judged by our actions and not our intentions. If we can be more clear about our intentions when we are with others, the more likely we share where we are coming from and what we are trying to do. Secrets kept intentionally will hinder interactions. Forgetting to share our intentions is equally disruptive because people just see the action that we take and not the intentions which might be quite honourable. We might have honourable reasons for asking. So if somebody asks you something you're not sure about, can I ask why you're asking that? It might say, oh well, it doesn't matter. In which case it probably doesn't matter because it's not that important if we don't know them that much. But if we do, it might be worth digging a little bit. 
And if we are dishonourable in our intentions and we try to control or manipulate, just like any other human, we undermine. We are, like any other human, we undermine trust in the moment of now. So most things are based on trust and acceptance of certain ways of operating. Forgetfulness and misunderstandings can abound when we are unclear and sometimes we can get clarity by sharing, sharing how we feel and the thoughts which follow. So sharing how we feel and the thoughts that follow, I feel like I'd like to, like to get to know you better because I think you're a good person. And they may turn around and say, well, I don't feel the same way. And that needs acceptance and let go because the information which has just been received is far bigger than one outlook. It's two outlooks. And if the other person's outlook is different to yours, better to know sooner rather than later. You need to know a person enough to keep on going. Anyway, letting go self-sufficiency in the extreme, which is where drink took me. Letting go the notion that our way of life is the only way. Letting go the idea that we can persuade people to our point of view. We might be able to, if we're open, honest and willing to do so, without putting any effort into common ground and or common understanding will lead to havoc and a return to insanity, not just for today, often for many a day, as we do not realise the impact we have on other people. So by sorting out our own stuff, which is what the 12 steps does, it doesn't mean automatically that everybody else has the same outlook or indeed wants to engage with us in any endeavour. All the world's a stage and we are part of what goes on. And if we try command and control outcomes, as history has proved, rebellion is never far away, either today or any other day. And that's true. How am I feeling this morning? Oddly enough, not too bad, even though sleep has been elusive. And my system physically upset by a simple soft drink full of all sorts of additives, which are not good for somebody taking insulin, it would seem. It seemed to play havoc on my system. Just a soft drink. It was a power Powerade drink. And I'm not criticising the drink. It's just not good for somebody like me taking the insulin I take. Just another learning lesson. And last night, going out with my best friend to a meeting and listening and sharing always helps. It is never the amount of time we spend with a person which counts. It is, qu it is the quality of the time we have with a person which matters most. And not having seen my friend in person for a couple of weeks, we do, when we do meet up, the time flies, laughter and sadness is shared, and just being in good company is particularly wonderful, as we are able to share the truth in those moments. Simply learning it's okay, just for today. And uh, that's me. I am tired, and I can tell by my voice, which is a bit crackly, and my head is a bit subdued, but I'm happy. And the sun is out, and it's March the 4th, 2013, another day in sobriety. What helps us, you know, if you've seen more than one of my videos, is the uh, serenity prayer, which is the can do, cannot do, can do and cannot do in the moment. What I can do and what I cannot do, and the wisdom of learning the, the difference keeps on growing. And yet, there are new situations and new outlooks and new things which go on. And I keep on learning the wisdom to know the difference between what I can and cannot do. And it's part of the serenity prayer, or as I think, or feel, restanity, it's restanity, sanity restored as well. We can get mad as hell about life because events and experiences can be good, bad or ugly. So we can be driven mad in the moment, and the can do, can't do, wisdom to know the difference brings me back into balance. It doesn't mean I solve everything at once, but I can find a, compose myself and understand the possibilities and the impossibilities of now. And sometimes when f things feel impossible, it feels impossible, the next step, whatever it might be, ask for help. I don't have to have all the answers to all the questions, indeed I cannot, because I'm just part of it, and the answers lie within others. 
so to God or in good conscience whichever floats your boat wherever you have power it is truth love and wisdom is probably where it resides in the truth love and wisdom of the universe and not inside my head which is only a limited amount of truth love and wisdom which is being improved my, wis my truth is improved my love is improved and my wisdom is improved as life goes on but it's only hopefully right sized in the moment of now so to God or in good conscience God grant me the serenity or a restoration to sanity grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference by the moment, minute, hour and just for today